I recently made a video about Project Stargate in which the CIA studied and experimented with remote viewing psychic phenomenon. In the video, I talked about a Project Stargate file where the CIA tried to remote view the site of a cattle or animal mutilation. Major Ed Dames, former U.S. Army, was the man who conducted that remote viewing session. Among many other fascinating sessions related to Mars, Atlantis, and other strange targets. Well, he has come forward to clarify some things for us. Yes, in your episode five, uh, the last, uh, I think, project was uh, uh, against the cattle mutilation. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, uh, viewer 095 was, uh, I was the operations officer, and that was a training target. So I was, I was running that as a, a training target. And uh, 095 was uh, First Lieutenant uh, Gabrielle Pettingill. And uh, the target was an anima mutilation uh, as a blind target. They're trying to, and what I would, my intent as a uh, training officer was attempting to get her to respond aesthetically. Uh, in our targets, if they're living targets, we download the emotions of the target and then we download our own reaction, our em how we emote to that target. For instance, uh, I don't like roller coasters. And if I were uh, given a target, a blind target of a roller coaster, then my, uh, a my, my emotional impact, the emotions at the target would be the same as somebody else's excitement, exhilaration, blah, blah, blah. But my own reaction to being there, to bilocating and being there would be nausea, get me the hell out of here, that kind of thing like that. Whereas somebody else's aesthetic impact may be, Wow, ye, like we right. use right. anaplasia and things like that. So, but we use our viewers' reaction in our analysis. Under what circumstances, blah blah blah, would you use those? Zero nine five. Gabby was remote viewing a cattle mutilation. Now, with Gabriella, I wanted her react reaction to a, something that is totally enigmatic. But what does it is? It's a huge jellyfish-like thing. It's big, and it lifts the animal up. Whoop, it breaks apart all their amino acids and peptides and things like that, slices and dices them and drops what's left back down. And it does it in a couple minutes or less. Uh, my first case was Linda Moulton Howe. I was sitting out in 1990, 1991. I was sitting in my Jeep with Linda Moulton Howe outside her brother's house in Albuquerque. And I said, Linda, give me a target. It, give me a target. And so she, a week later, uh, she, get, she gave me her her most egregious example of academy mutilation. And we, that was our first crack at that. Oh, to this day, I, I mean, we do not understand what, the, there's a big thing like a jellyfish that's invisible. Animals can perceive it. Animals, many animals can see into the ultraviolet more than humans can. That's why, for instance, a dog, if you're sitting in your cabin with a fire going and you're reading a book and your dog, all of a sudden lifts his head up and tracks something across the room and then puts his head back down, it was a ghost. And, and, and as an artifact of, its, of his existence, there's an ultraviolet fringe. And the dog, can, a cat too, can pick that up. Hummingbirds can pick up every extraordinary spectrum. And what that is and why it's doing, my first guess, and it's just a guess, uh, was a bioassay over time. They're taking out the tongues and the reproductive organs of animals over time to see if pollution or radiation particularly uh, is uh, it's accumulating in the environment. But it's just a guess. It's a, again, I think we're dealing with something that is really uh, beyond our comprehension.